itself be crumbled, and people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so that people went up into the city, every man straight before him. Jesus name. God told Moses to appoint Joshua to lead the children of Israel. As Moses is a prince, Joshua learned firsthand that he would always, always understand God's ways. <coughs> Human nature sometimes made Joshua like contemplate what God is thinking, but he always listened and waited and waited for what happened. Amen. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 34 9 that Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom. After the death of Moses, God chose Joshua to lead the children of Israel to the promised land. They set to conquer the land of Canaan in order to get there. In Joshua 1 9, God told Joshua, said, Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The glory of God will be with you forever you go. This means during everything, both good and bad, that God is there holding your hand through each step of the way. That's right. The city of Jericho was a sinful city. They had they worshipped the gods. The walls were as much as 30 feet high and 20 feet thick. Joshua sent two spies into the city to see what they were going up against. They met a harlot named Rob, Rahab, and they lodged at her house. Rahab was a pagan, was a she was a pagan woman from pagan background, but she understood that God was the one true God instead of the pagan gods that they all worship. She promised Rahab made the spies make an oath of her. She said that she won't mess up their plans or give away their plans, but in return, she they swore to spare her and her family when they would out again. She was the top straw of horror that knows me go. And as a, sign, as a sign of protection, the scar of cord parallels the Passover lamb. Just as the blood of the lamb is upon the houses of the Lord, Israelites are going to protect them from the judgment of God. So the cord hanging from Rahab's home brought safety and deliverance from the house of the The scar of rope is also like the blood of Christ, and now it keeps us and saves us, so we won't get in any trouble. When, he's, when we need him, he'll come and save us and rescue us. That's right, that's right, that's right. God told Joshua that there would be crossing the Jordan River. In chapter 3, verse 3, the most important part of the chapter is how they stress the importance of the Ark of the Covenant and concerning how it's supposed to be used. As soon as they stepped into the river, the water started going, up, going upstream and downstream. So the people of God came to walk on the land. God performed a miracle for Joshua just as he did for Moses by part of the Red Sea. Once they crossed over the Jordan, God gave Joshua a battle plan in order to defeat Jericho. God had a strange plan for the tribe. He told Joshua to have armed troops march around the city once each day for six days. The priests were to carry the ark blow the trumpet when the soldiers were supposed to keep silent. Then on the seventh day, the city would come, the city would come. During these days of silence, many people gave up and lost hope on what was about to happen. Sometimes we give up too easily thinking that it's like it's too hard for us to handle, so we just quit even though it's like so close, like we were like this close to touching, but they had to, all they did was they had to hold on and keep waiting for God to help them. Amen. I'm about to do something, I need all of y'all help. I'm gonna start to walk and I need you to scream and start taunting me, like giving me, like start making fun of me, all right? This is what they were supposed to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Excellent. So then you see hundreds of people just walk, walking in lines like all of these, all across the world of Jericho. They're just taunting them, just screaming at them, saying they can't do it. Like, what are y'all doing? You can't do this. What are you doing? Look at us protected in our big wall. You can't defeat us. But the Israelites were able to walk in silence, completely silent, even though the taunting and screaming was going against them. In spite of the taunts, they were coming out of the walls of Jericho. The Israelites were willing to make foolish The seventh day came, came and they started walking around seven times, still hearing the taunts and screaming. And then all of a sudden, I will be your again. And all of a sudden, they heard a great victory cheer, a great shout out. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Woo! And then all of a sudden you see the people in Jericho starting to shake on the wall, like what's going on? Oh no, the walls fell down. Many people think that the falling of Jericho is not a miracle, but a natural phenomenon. Even though there was many earthquakes um, on the high banks of Jericho that caused it to collapse. Even though God created the earthquakes and the landslide, we all know that it could the time could have made it a miraculous intervention. But we already know that God was in control from the beginning. Right. And he was the one who chose everything to happen. So when so when they started marching around, they all knew that the walls were going to happen. That, that was all going to happen too. All they had to do was just listen to God, follow oh God, don't talk, don't do anything. And then all of a sudden they just made a big voice cheer. And then the city came to them. So in the end, they all, the, the people of God stormed into the city and destroyed everybody except Rahab and her household. And... Joshua won the battle because he listened to God, and we can win our battles by praying and listening to God, and He will deliver us. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. 